So for two whole years, I refused to update NinjaTrader just because I built a lot of trading systems and tools and I wanna focus on stability with my trading systems and tools. And I didn't wanna jeopardize that by updating software. You know, How many times have you updated software and either broke your code or broke your application? It doesn't always you know, work that well. So today I just updated NinjaTrader to the latest version. It was actually very smooth and it worked out perfectly. And I wanted to highlight some of the big changes that the newest version of NinjaTrader has that may be able to benefit you as an algo trader. Before we get started, hello, my name is Jacob Amaral. I build code and test trading systems and trade live with futures trading systems on the futures market to make a return for myself. If you wanna learn more about algo trading and how to build your own trading system, see the links in the description below. And I've also switched over my brokerage to NinjaTrader as well. So that's what I trade with. Uh, there is a link down there if you wanna sign up with them and get working with them. So I'm gonna highlight, first of all, the big major change, which was C Sharp. As you guys know, NinjaTrader uh, uses NinjaScript as their language. It's basically just C Sharp with some libraries attached on it as their main programming language, okay? And I was on this version for the longest time, 8.0.28, which was uh, released April 27th, 2023. Um, of course, I updated all of these, but that, that was the version I stayed on up until uh, yesterday when I updated. And this had C Sharp version five, okay? So C Sharp version five is extremely old. I believe it was released, if I double check here, uh, history, where is the, there we go. So C Sharp 5 was released August 2012. And NinjaTrader used C Sharp 5 for all of its life cycle through 8.0, I believe. Uh, so all of these, uh, back to November 2016, it was using C Sharp 5. And even up until this release date, April 27th, 2023, it was still using C Sharp 5. So that means it was using an 11 year old version of C Sharp, the programming language. Uh, for their application, which is extremely old. Now it worked, that's okay, it was stable, it worked. You know, you can build trading systems, no, no issues with that. But you didn't, you weren't able to use the latest version, the latest features of C Sharp, and there was a lot of big ones, so I wanna highlight that. Currently, in the current version, which is 8.1.6, which was released September 25th, 2025, this year, you can now use up to C Sharp 13, I believe. Let me double check that. I think it was down here. Ooh. Yes. Ninja, Ninja Script Editor supports C Sharp 13, but they did not update from five until I think it was 8.1. No, it wasn't here. 8.1.2, yep. So they did not update to, to C Sharp 8 uh, from C Sharp 5 up until, when was it? October 25th, 2023. So two years ago, they finally updated to at least C Sharp 8. And even then, that's still, now, C Sharp 8 was released in 2019. So, okay, it was only four years old. Uh, but you can see the delay there. And I think, and, you know, it wasn't their fault. Obviously, they want to focus on stability and smooth releases. So there was probably why there was that delay to make sure everything was working smoothly. But anyways, I wanted to go over the, the, the new updates of C Sharp and what you can do. So I built a little test strategy here. Uh, so we'll over three updates. There's a lot more. I would definitely recommend reading through C Sharp's uh, change log but I'm, I'll update three kind of simple ones. So the biggest one is probably async await. So now you can build functions that uh, are awaited, which means that you can wait for a value or return uh, asynchronously. Now, I personally don't use this. I mean, my trading systems are simple and they have entry and exit signals. There's no reason for me to be awaiting something or needing asynchronous code. However, if you're doing something more complex where you're maybe you know, attaching to an API or doing a third party API call, uh, it may be you know, obviously through some type of request, usually a, a GET request, HTTPS, and you need to kind of await that uh, return. So there's an example here of using that. And I actually updated my OnBar update to use async, although I wouldn't recommend this without heavy, heavy testing. I'm not sure if the OnBar update can even be um, an async method. Uh, I actually have to test that. But anyways, you can call it now and you can get returns. So here in our on-bar update, we have a dummy variable called stats, which calls await get external signal async. And that is a task, which um, you know has some type of API that you're uh, waiting a return for. So you can now do that. That's one big thing of C Sharp. I think async was released in C Sharp 6. But as, as we know, uh, C Sharp 5 was Ninja's default up until about two years ago. So that's cool. 
Uh, the next thing is you can now default variables within the class level. So here I commented C sharp eight plus, uh, you can see I can default this profit target percent variable to 0.1 here. Before in C sharp five, you had to default it in the state set defaults uh, state, uh, which is here, which is still totally fine. I, I'd still recommend doing that. However, you do have that creative aspect of now defaulting it up here, which you may prefer, it might be more readable for you. It all depends kind of on your situation. So that's another cool update. And the last one is string interpolation. So this is kind of cool now in C sharp eight, you can prepend with the dollar sign symbol and put your variables in with formatting in curly braces. Okay, so in C sharp five, before you had to do the plus sign, you had to append to the string, concatenate it, with a plus and then the variable, and then you always had to add two string. Although in the print function with NinjaTrader, you don't have to add two string, it will automatically convert any variable to a string. But you had to do it this way, you can see it's a little bit longer now, you can use a dollar sign string interpolation and you can actually format it. So I believe this formats it in two decimal places, this F2 here, uh, this RSI variable. Uh, and then the current bar. So you can see it's a little bit shorter in code. Obviously these changes are not massive. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, are they gonna make a big difference in your trading system's performance? No, but it'll make your code more readable and will allow you to be more efficient writing code. So it may be saving you time and obviously that compounds over time um, in terms of savings. So anyways, you can now use C Sharp 13 with NinjaTrader, which is great, cool. You can access all those new features. However, Let's talk about the actual NinjaTrader updates that are gonna to apply to you as an algo trader. So this perspective, the updates that I'm gonna be highlighting is for algo traders, not for you know discretionary traders that are opening up charts, making manual trades, placing stop losses. This is for people that are building automated trading systems and need the most access to in, in terms of you know features for building trading systems, creativity, that sort of thing, okay? So a lot of these updates that NinjaTrader does is is cool in terms of you know maybe you can do cool new stuff with your charts or there's new features like this you know pulse feature where you can see uh, if a an instrument or an asset class is long or short but for me as an algo trader i think for most of you i don't really care about that i don't use that so those are more more information for sure which may benefit other people but personally it's not something i would use so i'm going to skip a lot of this this stuff it's mostly chart stuff or making things look nicer, which is always great. Nothing wrong with that, but personally, I wouldn't use. The first thing that I like is this NinjaScript access to volume profile. So what this does is there's an indicator called volume profile in NinjaTrader, which shows the, if I were to explain it in the best way I can, I personally don't use it, but off the top of my head, it generates volume at different levels and shows you where volume was most traded for an instrument. And now with NinjaScript access, you can access these variables like the POC, which I believe is point of control, value area high and low. And now you can actually build it as a signal and make trades based on those variables. So I think that's really cool. I did take a sneak peek at that, uh, that indicator and it's more of a high frequency type of indicator because it uses bid and ask take values. So it's not something I would usually build a trading system on as you know, when you use tick data, for most data vendors, you only get access to the last six months, and I prefer using four to five years to build trading systems. So personally, I wouldn't use it unless I were to buy, say, tick data for the last five years, which can be a little bit pricey. Uh, but I do like that. I think that's great, and I do want to highlight that. As I scroll down here, not really features I would use. I don't think there is any other, anything other than the C-sharp 13 update, which I think is great. I actually need to read up on it because I still don't know all the features that were added. Here we have bug fixes, uh, nothing that is massive. I think that's good, okay. So I'll go back one more release date. So that was 8.1.6, which is the latest update. Uh, 8.1.5, which is May 28th. There's something I wanted to highlight. Once again, these features I wouldn't really use. I think this is cool, the description of the indicator. Wouldn't use it too often, but it would be nice to read on what they do. Obviously the documentation for NinjaTrader is, would tell you that, but here's another thing I want to highlight, ignore errors and no alert on strategy. So by default, when you build an, uh, a strategy, the error handling, I think the default is stop, cancel, close. Yes, so most strategies will have this set up, which means that if there's an error with your strategy, it will stop the strategy 
and you'll get an error pop-up, which, you know, obviously makes sense, right? You want to know if something goes wrong, what happened, and then maybe you want to turn off your strategy and try and fix it and, and synchronize your positions. But now you can actually ignore errors. I believe there was a setting that said, uh, just ignore errors, so it would, or not stop your strategy. Uh, I, I have to double check, but basically you could code it where you'd still get the error pop-up, but the strategy would, be, would keep running. But now you can say, don't show a pop-up for me. And it's up to you as a developer or trader to check your log files uh, you know, immediately or maybe at the end of the trading day to see what went wrong to fix it. Personally, I don't think I would use this because I would like an alert on what went wrong. But maybe if you have, if you want to save resources or you know, you're also manually trading so you don't want a pop-up happen, maybe that's, that's right for you. But I thought that was interesting. Any other big features that I would use? Charles Schwab was a big one. So this was back in May, so it's been out for a while. But as you guys know, Charles Schwab bought uh, TD Ameritrade a couple of years ago, I think in like 2019 or 2020, and they merged uh, the brokerages. And now it looks like, you know, it took time to merge their APIs and now they have an API. So especially if you're an equities or options trader, you can now build trading systems and trade it live with your Schwab account, uh, which may interest you. I don't think it works for futures. I believe it's only equities. Uh, once again, not something I would use because I already have a brokerage account, but that could be, um, it could be, you know, if, if you use Schwab, it could be an example for you. Uh, any other major updates? Do, do, do. I mean, there's a lot of bug fixes in terms of connections and obviously Schwab. I don't think anything massive. Yeah. Okay. The other small, small thing I wanted to highlight, this was a big, um, a big pain point for most people, but commissions. So setting commissions in NinjaTrader and for the back test to actually mimic those commissions, you had to use the SIM 101 account, which is the default SIM account on any NinjaTrader installation. And you had to go into the accounts tab, set up a commission template. It was a bunch of work. Now you can just change the commission template here in any back test. So if I want to back test with my lifetime commission template or monthly commission template, I can just select it here, which I think is way more usable and friendly for most algo traders. So I do like that. I think that was a, a big, I mean, not really a huge update, but just a really a good quality of life improvement uh, that I like to see. So other than that, yeah, I've been using it for the last uh, two days and um, just download their installer and it installed and, and there was no coding errors with any of my strategies. I, have, I am having a small issue with my data vendor, uh, which is CQG. So I'm hoping to resolve that. I'm currently working with NinjaTrader on that, but other than that, no, no issues and it was very smooth on the latest update, 8.1.6. So yeah, if you're, if you're watching and you, know, you have NinjaTrader, I do recommend updating or at least trying it out. If you do get errors, you can always roll back and, and use your, your old installation. Personally, I've been using, the old installation that I've been using is 8.0.28, which is extremely stable. On my production server with uh, my live trading, I still use this version. I haven't updated that one yet. I've only updated my dev computer, so the, the computer I develop on to the latest NinjaTrader update. So uh, obviously in a live production environment, it's it can be a different story and that's why I haven't done it yet. But uh, you know, I may do that in the future. Obviously, I have to dedicate quite a bit of time to do that. I'm not ready to do that yet. So my, my live production server, which is trading real money, still uses 8.0.28, but my, my dev computer now uses 8.1.6. And yeah, I'm happy that I updated. So anyways, that's my video. I was very reluctant to uh, update NinjaTrader, but I finally did it and it was actually really smooth. And I do recommend it uh, if you want to get access to the latest features, especially for C Sharp, and then also a lot of quality of life improvements. I think if you're a discretionary trader, it probably helps you way more as there's a lot more tools in terms of sentiment and charting and all that, which may help you. But once again, that's not my wheelhouse, so I won't really comment on that. Anyways, I hope you found value in this video. Let me know what version of NinjaTrader you use in the comments below, or if you trade with another platform like TradeStation or QuantConnect, I'd love to hear what platforms you use. It's always interesting um, on you know platforms that I haven't heard about before as well. Definitely like researching them. So anyways, that's the video. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye, guys.